We've conducted a small poll and asked F&I managers what their most difficult situations were. The top answers included customers in the following categories. Customers that were in a hurry, that didn't want to hear a product presentation. Short-term lease customers. And customers that wanted to pay cash or obtain funds from a third party. Now we agree this can be difficult situations for any F&I manager, especially one without a plan. So here's the good news. The proprietary F&I sales process developed by the College of Automotive Management is specifically designed to handle each of these tough situations and produce phenomenal results. To help demonstrate how to accomplish each step of our suggested sales process, we brought in a graduate of the College of Automotive Management, Kim Cavanaugh. Kim graduated from the college 11 years ago and has been a top producing F&I manager and sales manager ever since. She's been able to consistently maintain a per car average in F&I between $1,500 and $2,000 per unit in a variety of dealerships, including dealerships in affluent areas where cash paying customers and short term lease customers are common. She raises the bar everywhere she works. Now Kim will demonstrate how to accomplish each step of our recommended sales process regardless of the customer type. Right, so what is the problem? Well in this training course we'll explain 13 problems most F&I managers live with or actually cause that create senseless customer objections to these benefits offered in F&I. So unlike other F&I training you may have already experienced in the past that focused on how to handle customer objections, we promise to give you solutions that will completely eliminate senseless objections from ever happening at all. Now I want to assure you that these solutions are not hypothetical ideas or just nice thoughts. They are ironclad and they've been tested and working in dealerships for years. demonstrate this, when we gave the first file to Kim in order to prepare for the first role play, which was a customer that was in a hurry and paying cash, actually they were obtaining their money from a third party uh, credit union, Kim spent about six minutes reviewing and prepping the file. It didn't take her long, but she did a lot. She reviewed the file for accuracy and completeness. She checked the advances and debt ratios and chose a lender option that she could offer to try and convert the customer to dealer financing. She gathered all of the forms she would need to complete the transaction without interruptions. She identified several reasons why she could imagine great things about the customer. She identified several reasons the customer would benefit from her products. She chose a product mix that was best suited for the customer situation as she saw it on paper. And she set up her menu and her pricing. She has done literally thousands of F&I transactions. She has a trained eye and a set routine for processing a lot of information very quickly. But as you can see so far in this process, a lot of work has went into preparing the customer's mind and getting their undivided attention. The F&I manager is now in the best possible position to ask the customer for permission to explain the benefits of the products the F&I manager has prepared for her customer. Now to obtain this permission, the college recommends using a F&I department CSI verification form like the one you see on the screen. This also allows the F&I manager to confirm 100% F&I department CSI in addition to verifying 100% sales department CSI earlier in the F&I sales process. The best part of the entire F&I sales process can be disclosing prices if you are dealing with a friend now and you've only suggested products they really need and fully explained their value and you've priced your products fairly. At this point, all products have an actual pennies per day cost if they're cancelable for a pro rata refund. So you want to be sure and point that out to increase your product penetration and avoid unnecessary cancellations later. Or they have an average cost over the term of the coverage if they are not cancelable. So those actual daily costs for cancelable products, 
or the average daily cost for non-cancelable products will look very small when compared to the tremendous value you have created in your products if you've done everything properly. Now, as the actual daily costs, total costs, and effect on monthly payment costs, if the deal is a financial lease deal, are fully disclosed and explained, you are helping the customer fully understand the terms of their purchase, which is part of your number one objective. Remember, the number one objective is to make sure the customer is happy and fully understands all aspects of the purchase. Kim, I really appreciate everything you shared with me today. Uh, at the end right now, I'm really at a dilemma. Uh, I started out with a payment of $300. You're showing me a payment of $390 with all these options. Uh, I can see the value in it, but my wife and I, we agreed to originally to be somewhere at $300, and I can't see myself at $400. Do you really think I need this? That sounds good. Simple budget contract, I understand that. All right. Oh, my income has more than tripled. Probably tripled my income from the highest that I ever made before. After graduating from the College of Automotive Management, I would say my income increased anywhere between three to five thousand dollars per month. Yeah, the, the income um, three times what, what what I was normally making.